Welcome to Acoustic Corner. I'm Steve Rothenberg, and each week we'll explore the world of acoustic music, from blues to bluegrass, classical, flamenco, and fingerstyle guitar, and everything in between. We'll feature live performances by some of the best musicians and bands in the Denver area, and visit local guitar shops and luthiers to discover where you can find yourself a beautiful custom-made guitar, banjo, or mandolin. For those of you interested in learning how to play guitar or improving your skills, you'll find lessons on how to play fingerstyle guitar, blues guitar, as well as other popular styles. Join us each week for a tour through the acoustic music landscape. There's something for everyone at Acoustic Corner. I'm here with Warren Kennison, good friend of mine, and uh, Warren and I played uh, this song at um, Legal Grounds Coffee Shop back in uh, December, Christmas time. It's it's uh, the first time I ever heard it. It's a, such a beautiful song. I play it all, all year round. Uh, it, it's a standard one of my uh, the tunes that I play. It's called Lo How a Rose Air Bloom. And um, I guarantee you that uh, if you've heard this song before, you've not heard it played on the banjo and guitar. So uh, Warren, why don't you kick it off and uh, let's show the folks what we're talking about. I worked this out on uh, a, a banjo, actually, that's made out of wood that uh, Edward Dick makes. Um, and uh, it almost just set itself onto the banjo with this classical banjo sounding instrument. Um, Is that a banjola, by the way? Because well, somebody told me about Ed, uh, Ed Dick's uh, custom instruments. And well, he has a CD that features artists playing that instrument. Okay. And he has a festival, which may still be, uh, you know, well, held every year, yeah. featuring that instrument. Yeah, Ed yeah. Dick is the uh, luthier up at the old town pick and parlor, who actually did the neck reset and, fre and refretted my uh, Martin D. 35 here a number of years ago, and does great work. Maybe on the show pretty soon. <laughs> well, it could be. <laughs> All right, let's hear what you have to uh, play. And I'll, uh, I'll listen and I'll come in and I'll join you. Okay. All right. Very nice. Yeah. I know that you sing the uh, some of these verses, which um, oh, we'll Steve. have to 
I'll tell you what, we so can another maybe, time. Yeah. You can go on the website uh, under Yes, the Joy of Man's Desiring, and yeah. uh, it's a German chorale, and the lyrics are as beautiful as Mendelssohn or Mozart ever wrote. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful It's a beautiful, it's, it's, there's, there's, I don't know, 16 lyrics, to, <laughs> sets of lyrics to it. Well, I, I hope you enjoyed that, and I certainly did. Thanks very I much. I did too, Steve. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Hi, I'm Chip Bolendonk. I'm going to play a song with my Digitech Jamman Looper. It's a song I wrote. It's kind of cheesy. It's called Where Do We Go From Here? Uh, the White Fence Farm here in Lakewood, Colorado, and I'm with uh, Greg Blake and uh, Jay Ganender of Mountain Holler, and they're going to be playing for us a little bit later. Uh, I thought I'd talk to them a bit and uh, have them tell us a little bit about the band. So, uh, Greg, when did you guys start getting together? 
Uh, we got together um, to play some music for Sweet Fanny Adams, a little establishment up in Bailey, a little Irish pub. And uh, they, uh, she called Jay actually one Friday morning and said the band that, that she had scheduled that evening uh, wouldn't be able to make it. And so Jay called me and Tom and uh, a couple of other of our friends, and we got together that night and started playing, and I guess the, uh, the rest is history. As yeah, so Mountain, that's how Mountain Holler, and from then on, Mountain Holler was formed. By the way, thanks, you guys, for letting me use your music on the, uh, the ending of our show. It's, oh, uh, it's our honor. I, yeah. yeah, I've had to uh, explain that I'm not the one playing the dobro at, uh, at the end of that thing. You're not? I'm not, no. So, Jay, you guys were back east a couple of weeks ago. How'd that go? Yeah, we just got back from a trip to West Virginia, and uh, that's where I, I got my new style here, the new beard. You're, you're Abe Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it went very well, uh, very well received, and it was great to play for a, an audience that was unfamiliar with who we are and get to share our music uh, around the, the nation. So it was a good time, yeah. So you guys working on another CD? Well, right now, uh, we're working on a, a band competition at Rocky Grass, um, and I suppose we're, we're working up some new tunes for that, that competition, so it, it wouldn't surprise me that you'd see those new tunes on, the, on another CD. So are these tunes that you're, uh, you're composing yourself, or are these uh, covers of uh, the standard bluegrass fair? Well, I'd say uh, it's about 50-50 right now, yeah. Uh, we just wrote uh, a new instrumental this week, and uh, we've got a couple of, um, of vocals that Greg's brought to the to the mix that uh, that are just some wonderful wonderful vocals. Also, Greg has uh, brought a excellent instrumental to the uh, mix too. So I'd say it's about 50-50 for what we're working on right now. Well, uh, I guess every bluegrass band takes uh, Bill Monroe as their inspiration, but besides. Uh the uh, father of bluegrass. Who else uh, inspires your uh, your music? Well, some of the other uh, standard fair, you know, bluegrass patriarchs. I guess you could call them um, Ralph and Carter Stanley, the Stanley Brothers. We do a lot of their material. Love their stuff. Uh, Flatten Scruggs, of course, um, and then maybe some more contemporary greats like uh, J.D. Crow, Tony Rice, Doyle Lawson, those. Uh, but then also, you know, we've, uh, you know, classic country music is, is in my roots as well. So, and that, that, works, that works great, of course, with bluegrass music too. So, Jay, you've been playing bluegrass for a while, but uh, when did you stop calling your instrument a, a violin and started calling it a fiddle? <laughs> when, I cleaned, uh, when I spilt beer on it for the first time, I think, is when I started calling it a fiddle. Uh, truth be known, uh, and a lot of people ask, what's the difference? Really, there's a little bit of difference in the cut of the bridge, but for the most part, uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between a violin and fiddle besides the style in which you play it. Uh, when did I start? Boy, I probably called it a fiddle from uh, when I started just playing fiddle about eight to ten years ago. Um, but, you know, there's certainly some nights that I still feel the need to call it a violin. <laughs> well, I do remember when you put down your electric guitar and you picked up the, uh, the fiddle. That's true. So, uh, so uh, where did you learn how to play like Tony Rice or uh, better than Tony Rice? Oh, goodness. No. <laughs> well, of course, Tony's a huge influence. Uh, I listened a lot to Tony as I was growing up. I started playing the guitar when I was seven and uh, probably moved from rhythm, strictly rhythm, to flat picking around 11 or 12. Yeah. So, and just turned 47 this, this summer, so I've been at it a little while. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, uh, I, uh, I heard um, Chorus Del McCurry do uh, 52 Vincent, and uh, you know, I thought that was a bluegrass tune for my whole life, and then I heard somebody actually play it like uh, Rich, Richard Thomas? Mm -hmm. Richard Thomas Thompson. Thompson yeah. And I said, man, so uh, do you uh, bluegrass up any uh, any standard tunes that uh, you know that we're going to maybe hear later on, or that you, we can hear if you uh, get your CD, or that are not traditionally bluegrass? not traditionally bluegrass? What do you what do you bluegrass up? Uh, you know, uh, like the Star Spangled Banner or something. Like that? <laughs> no, I can't say. Is there anything else that we're kind of putting our spin a bluegrass spin? We've taken some classic country and given it uh, given it some bluegrass instrumentation, and I think there's a lot of people that are doing that. At the end of the day, if you play bluegrass slow enough, it becomes country. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, well, we're looking forward to hearing you uh, in just a little while, so uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> 